Welcome to the next edition of our Master Magnets talks about different types of mineral processing uh, separator available to uh, engineers. This particular unit is the disc separator, which is an over uh, an overband mounted magnet uh, separator that will uh, is very selective for certain specific applications. This is a laboratory unit. There are other unit policy industrial units are much wider in belt width. The unit itself is, is it's quite an old design, but it's a, a design that's been updated magnetically to get better uh, improvements and better magnetic susceptibility uh, removal of different particles. If you close in on the machine, it is basically a lift type separator which lifts magnetically susceptible particles off the belt uh, and means that it gives you a very clean product. You're working against gravity, which means you get a very concentrated magnetic product. The particular sample that we're looking at here is a beach sand sample which contains various different minerals of different magnetic susceptibility. It will contain ilmenite, garnet, and then monazite, silica, and zircon sand. The ilmenite is the most magnetic particle, um, and as the, feed, the material feeds on to the belt via a vibratory feeder in a mono layer, then you'll see that the first disc of, uh, is operating at a gap here of about four millimeters. Uh, we, we have an independent field, magnetic field that we can induce on that disc. It will lift up the ilmenite and deposit it into the first collection tray as it leaves the influence of the magnet. We get a second bite at the cherry at the, uh, at the other end of the disc. This is lower, this is set to two millimeters in size. We have more magnetic field strength there, and that will capture the garnet material, which is has a slightly lower magnetic susceptibility. And that is deposited into the second tray. An industrial unit will often have three of these different discs in series, which allows us, in theory, to get uh, seven different products of a mineral stream. So they're ideal for processing materials like beet sands, uh, which contain often very complex mineralizations. The advantage of this process, as I said before, is because it's lifting up off the belt, you get a very clean magnetic product. So we can get ilmenite concentrates of 90 to 92 to 94% concentration. We can get very clean garnet product that can go for abrasive manufacture. We can then take our non-magnetics from the first material, from the first pass, and then put it through again at two millimeters at a higher field strength and we do the monazite as a concentrate which will leave us with the quartz and the zircon as the final products that can go off for further downstream processing. So it's very flexible. I can't stress the fact that it's infinitely variable because each disc can be moved up and down and the field strength at each uh, edge of the disc can be varied on the coil structure. So uh, these units are used a lot in the processing of beach sands, as I said, tin uh, processing, wolframite separation, and abrasives manufacture, garnet production, uh, and recycling in some uh, foundry sands applications as well. Again, because we can get a very clean product at the end of the process. You can come in various uh, widths and various uh, capacities depending on customer requirements. Lots of these sold into particularly the African continent at the moment for tin cantaloupe processing. If we look here at the beginning, this is the uh, original sample, if we can close in on, on that in the shell, you can see that this is a, a, a beach sand deposit which contains a different mineral element. You'll see there's a pink element there, a pink uh, mineral which is the garnet, the black dots are the ilmenite, and in there as well will be silica sand, uh, monazite, which is a rare earth uh, phosphate mineral, and there'll be some rutile, titanium dioxide, uh, and some zircon sand, which is heavy, uh, a heavy mineral sand as well. So it's a, it's a mixture of about six different uh, mineral elements. So what we see from the separation is, at our first disc here, we get a, a beautiful black concentrate of the ilmenite, which is, we, we've done X-ray fluorescence analysis on, 
is about 92% um, ilmenite concentration, maybe a little bit more than that. So that's our first concentrate for sale. Our second concentrate for sale is our garnet, which can go to the abrasives manufacturer. It's nice and tightly size range. Most of the ilmenite has been uh, removed from it, so it's suitable for that process. Then on the second disc that we used, we'd produce a monazite concentrate. You can see that's there is a sort of light brownish mineral. That contains neodymium, praseodymium, cerium, lanthanum, and can be taken for processing for rare earth elements and recovery. So it's a very high grade product with a high value. The final material here on this is the silica sand, which is relatively worthless in this application, but it also the zircon as well, which is the heavy mineral that is used in foundry applications and things like that. This would go for downstream processing, possibly electrostatic separation, possibly density separation, and recovery that way. So you can see you can get beautiful concentrates, which are high grade, high recovery, uh, and it's infinitely flexible for, for these sorts of beach sands operations. Okay, that concludes the, uh, the talk about the disc separator. As I said before, it's been around for 100 years, However, the magnetic element is, uh, design has been improved uh, and it still has specific applications where you want, you have a very complex mineral matrix that you want to separate and it will give you great flexibility, it will give you very high grade concentrates and it will allow you to separate out different mineral streams which allows you to get the benefit of the value of the mineral rather than just selling a, a mixed mineral product to your client. Uh, test facilities are available at Master Magnets to uh, obviously uh, look at samples and it, so if you have a sample that you feel would benefit from this sort of analysis and test work then we'll be delighted to test it for you and make some process recommendations going forward.